I would say you buy one of these BX23s, first thing to do, guys, is to check for this issue. Hey everybody, how's it going? Jack here from his garage. And you see I got my little orange baby Tigger the tractor in the back here. Um, so I've been uh, holding off on making this video because I wanted to get a get a bit of time with this tractor but uh, today I want to talk about uh, maintenance and issues I've had with this tractor. I am still extremely happy with this tractor uh, but I want to basically uh, make this video to kind of give you guys that are buying the X23 some tips and pointers to avoid some problems that I've had. Um, I'm very very hard on my stuff. Uh, if you've watched my videos you can see me uh, with the chipper I, I push everything to the max all the time. Uh, my wife is always harping at me and, and the way I, I see things is uh, I'm putting things through their trials you know but it's good to know what limitations things have because if you if you're always babying everything and you're never pushing anything you, you don't really know uh, what it can do what, what it can what it can handle with the loader for example you know I, I design firewood pallets that are just at the limitation of what my tractor can lift I get this thing revved up full RPM and I can barely move these things when the, when the wood is, is uh, green so and, and the way I see it it's under warranty at this point uh, and I'll know if anything is not gonna last it should give out now so um, I don't purposely try to break things uh, although I do every now and then have issue with that let's uh, let's talk about the tractor here so I did have a couple issues with hydraulic leaks I gotta say um, one of them was the the seal right down here see this seal here this must have been either improperly assembled at the factory or something so I had an issue with that and then one of the uh, and, that, and that's not Kubota's fault right like they don't make seals um, there was a hydraulic leak in one of these hoses as well and again not Kubota's fault these are parts made by others um, the other issue I had uh, was this little stopping uh, solenoid here that actually gave out and uh, I had to open the hood and, and push on this uh, this governor here or this one to stall to stall the tractor so and actually this is something every Kubota tractor owner should know uh, if you ever roll your tractor these ROPs are there for that reason to kind of stop the tractor at uh, 90 degrees but you if you roll your tractor and it keeps going or even at 90 <clears throat> what tends to happen is the engine this solenoid no longer will stop that engine uh, uh, so you can turn off your key all you want that engines on the side it'll keep running so you gotta you gotta open up the hood and you gotta stall it with the by holding this in um, so I've been told by the uh, by the uh, service guy when he came over and he showed me that uh, I might have to do that someday if my tractor rolls over and what happens when it rolls over is uh, oil is no longer being grabbed from the oil pan uh, and the engine will uh, will seize up so when I bought the tractor um, I bought the tractor seven year um, insurance I guess and and that insurance actually covers you rolling your tractor and the engine uh, seasoning up like that and uh, the service guy was tell me you wouldn't believe how common this is uh, well he had a couple uh, in the shop at the time that had this had happened so uh, and he said they rolled the tractor they changed the engine and you're looking at a those engines are uh, I forget what he said they were like four or five thousand dollars something like that 
to change that tiny little engine. I mean, this is not a very big engine. It's only a 23, uh, 23 horsepower, you know, diesel engine, but that's how much they cost. So the other issue I had was new construction, of course. Um, got a nail in the track in the uh, in the tire here. I bought a brand new tire over here. Um, and this is a good tip here. These tires, um, if you just buy the tire, it's like 300 bucks. But when I was over at the dealership, uh, the uh, salesman had two tires in his uh, in his office, and I told him, I said, "Yeah, I said I'm going to need a new tire at some point." And then he mentioned to me, he said, "Well, he said the tire is 300 bucks by itself." But the tire with the rim is 96, <laughs> so 96 bucks with for a tire and a rim, and I was like, huh, this is crap for that price. I can make trailers with those and all kinds of things. So uh, yeah, so I grabbed one of those tires uh, just so I could have it, and then. Uh, but when I seen this thing, I thought, huh. So I pulled the nail out, and then. Uh, just wanted to see how good this uh, Gorilla Glue is. So uh, I'm sure some of you guys are laughing at me there for, for doing this, but you know, hey, it's worth a try. And what I figure is gonna happen is, um, cause I, I took the Gorilla Glue and I, I literally squeezed it down into the hole and had some squeezed inside. What I think is gonna happen, or hoping is gonna happen is because I had glued down inside there and glue all around this and then I put the nail on top of the glue this Gorilla Glue is kind of flexible I actually use it to to repair this boot I know you can't even see it anymore but this whole thing was coming apart and I put Gorilla Glue on that and I was able to uh, repair this and uh, you know if I figured if it's holding on my boot and that's three weeks ago maybe and I've been using these boots pretty much every day, so um, I figure it should keep the nail underneath glued to the tire, and then all around the nail that that gorilla glue should should keep a good seal. So I'll let you guys know how well this works, but yeah, gorilla glue your tires. <laughs> Who would have thought, right? I gotta take a little gorilla glue commercial thing here. Gorilla glue your tires. I had a problem inside the electrical wiring um, so you guys may have this issue I don't know I don't know maybe this is really rare and I'm the only guy who's had this but right in here there's a there's a relay okay uh, I think in this box here what that really does is it controls the the electric uh, shoot deflector so this little switch here okay on for the uh, for the snowblower and uh, I think I went through three batteries believe it or not uh, they paid for every battery uh, so what happened is when the service guy came over uh, at first at first they gave me a new battery and then I told them I said look I put my meter on this uh, and I said it's drawing 15 milliamps or something. It should have been nothing, okay? When you flip that switch, you shouldn't be drawing anything off that battery. So I knew something was drawing somewhere. Turns out water had got in, into this relay somehow. Um, and it's supposed to be completely sealed, but something happened. And water got in there and corroded it. And so it was it was always tracking true uh, so they fixed the relay brought it back battery died again so then uh, when when I had the leaks on the cylinder uh, they came and picked up the tractor took it to the shop and they uh, they must have redone the, the wiring and found the problem I, I never really heard back what the issue was the second time but fixed that gave me a brand new battery and so far so good with the battery now I think I got that 
uh, issue behind me. Then, the other problem I had was with this snowblower. So, and this, I would say, you buy one of these BX23s, first thing to do, guys, is to check for this issue. All right, so, the real uh, issue I had with the snowblower was back behind this little panel here. Take this cover off, I'll show you guys. And I noticed a few, uh, a few people on YouTube that have this tractor and snowblower um, ended up trading in their snowblower because they they thought that this snowblower was a piece of junk, but it was really a factory issue. And so what happened, what I what I discovered was that Kubota had forgotten to tighten this Allen screw. And so what these other people were, were having happen is this chain was breaking. And when it happened to me, I, I, I took a good look at it and I was like, how, you know, how could this chain break? This is a, a, very, he a very hefty chain. There isn't much torque because this is the, the little gear here off the tractor is really just spinning this larger gear. So I was like, there's not that much, uh, so, you know, in my, in my opinion as an engineer, when I looked at this, I was like, this seems designed like it should be able to, to handle just about anything. And when I took a closer look at it, I realized that this sprocket had moved from where it should have been. <clears throat> and the chain was actually misaligned. So, um... I just loosened it up and realigned it and so if you get one of these tractors first thing you should do is open this up um, check this uh, this alignment and then uh, tighten that allen screw and uh, I highly recommend you put some Loctite or something on there I might actually even weld that thing on there I might put a little tiny little tack weld on that shaft make sure that thing never moves again so you know when you look when you open this up you should you should be able to see this shaft should be roughly uh, roughly flush here and if 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 it moves in or out what tends to happen is this chain now gets jammed up up, up on the tooth and then that causes a lot of strain on that chain and causes it to break so these should these things should not break so um, I you know I took pictures of this thing and because uh, it, it literally broke on the first time I think the second time uh, it was used so the first time I used it um, you know I didn't think to, I'd have to take this thing apart and check that it was put together right from the factory right so I didn't I didn't check any of that stuff but <clears throat> hindsight being 2020 I kind of remember running this thing uh, unloaded and hearing this cluck cluck every now and then and this cluck and what was happening was that the chain was was coming up on one of these teeth and dropping down and that was what was making that noise so um, at the time I probably should have stopped everything and investigated further but not knowing how these things should sound you know you, you, don't, you just don't know I think that's uh, that's <laughs> well that's 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 several issues but um, is this something that would make me change my decision and, and go green or anything like that? No. Uh, this tractor has been uh, overall that I you know I haven't seen an actual flaw from Kubota other than you know forgetting to do things and uh, like a seal that would happen on a on a on a John Deere as well. No, you know, seals aren't made by Kubota or whatnot. Uh, I don't think it's got anything to do with the seal design. It's just bad luck. Uh, hydraulic hoses, you know, 
Parker makes those or whoever, I'm not sure who makes those ones, but they're not made by Kubota. So, so those aren't things that I would say, you know, I, I, I would take a, a notch off Kubota for. Um, the, the biggest reason why I chose Kubota over John Deere uh, was because of the design of the engine and the ventilation of the engine. This engine has the cooling fan next to the operator and it pushes the air out towards the front. So it pushes the air towards the exhaust. Um, so cooling air gets thrown forward and it drags that exhaust forward. So when you have this thing in a small garage like I have here um, and you start this thing in the winter, as long as you got your garage door open, it's pushing all the exhaust outside. So that helps to uh, to uh, keep your, your fumes out of your garage, let's say. Um, and because I have multiple chemical sensitivity, I seen that as the, the single biggest advantage of this tractor over the, uh, the John Deere. Now there's obviously other advantages. Um, the tobacco design on this is slightly better than the John Deere. Uh, the John Deere has a stronger loader. So if that's really important for you, I would recommend that you get a John Deere. Uh, for me, that wasn't really a, na a major issue. I mean, I, I, I load this thing to the max all the time, but um, it's physically a slightly smaller tractor so that I like that. It takes up a little bit less room in my in my garage here. <clears throat> The snowblower on the on the BX23 or the BX uh, tractor is better. Uh, if you look at any of the videos online, you'll see that this snowblower throws snow way further than the uh, the John Deere. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the snowblower design or it's the the RPM of the the, the mid-mounted shaft, but it seems like the <clears throat> Kubota's got that uh, snowblower design uh, uh, an, an edge there for sure. Um, it's so far I mean I've taken this thing in the woods I have trails there in the woods I'll be putting a GoPro on the tractor in the future and, and taking you guys on, on, a, on a ride along but uh, I find that this thing handles really well in the woods um, I uh, yeah so I am completely satisfied with my BX23 and even more satisfied with my dealership. Uh, my dealership, when when I give give them the details of this issue here on the snowblower, they 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 bought me a brand new chain. No, now I had paid for just a pin here to to fix it, but they ordered me a new chain, gave me a brand new chain. Uh, so they own up on that. All the repairs, the seals. Um, uh, the the relay issue, the battery, uh, you know the 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 uh, the batteries they they had to uh, give me brand new batteries. I haven't paid a dime off that for that. Uh, when the service guy came over, I paid for the oil change, hydraulic oil change and whatnot, of course. But all his his time spent troubleshooting anything else uh, I haven't paid for. So they've been uh, really good for that. Uh, they they're fairly quick when I call them to cut they can come and pick up my tractor sometimes same day or the next day uh, and uh, they repair it in, in a reasonable amount of time they're they're a busy busy dealership but uh, yeah so can't complain uh, so yeah so I still would recommend you guys get a Kubota um, but bear in mind the little issues that I've told you guys about um, the last thing I'll say is the stopping solenoid uh, that I think was partially my fault uh, because I, I I had hit stop and and accidentally I, I, I anyways I, I went stop start really quickly uh, so I think that might have uh, shorted that solenoid. Uh, yeah, so just be careful. You know, when you when you shut your tractor off, shut it off. Th make sure your key goes one way or the other, and you're not, you know, flicking the key or anything like that. But I think I might have done that as I was getting off, and so um, 
So I won't blame that 100 percent on you know because I mean, even that's not even a Kubota part. I don't think that this somebody else makes that too. Right? But those little things, uh, solenoids, they have a little coil inside. They can fail any time. So, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video on the tractor. So, bye for now.